Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for participating and logging in tonight, this evening's public meeting regarding the Oakland Harbor Turning Basin's widening re-release of the draft report. Uh, you're joined here tonight with um, members from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers team and the Port of Oakland. Um, we will start the meeting shortly as soon as we have our critical mass. Thank you so much. We will, start, we will start in just a brief moment. For those already logged in, please note that this meeting is being recorded. Thank you all again. For those of you who have joined us today, my name is Laura Ariola with the Port of Oakland, letting you know that you have logged in on the Zoom meeting for the Oakland Harbor Turning Basin's widening re-release draft report. Uh, we will begin the meeting in just a moment. Thank you for waiting. Okay, thank you all. We have a, a, about 45 members of the public who have Zoomed on. Uh, my name is Laura Ariola. Thank, thank you for joining. For those of you just plugging in, you've joined the public meeting regarding the Oakland Harbor Turning Basin's widening re-release draft report. You're joined here tonight with U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and the Port of Oakland. Um, and I'm here to let my colleague know, Erica Powell, that we have, uh, again, about 45 people who have Zoomed in on the meeting, and now would, uh, is a good time to commence. Thank you, Laura. Appreciate that. So good evening, everyone. This is, um, we really appreciate you joining us this evening. We know that there's a lot of competing um, responsibilities at home with family and work and other things. So we really appreciate you being here today. Um, this is a, like I said, a listening session for the Oakland Harbor Turning Basins Widening Feasibility Study. My name is Erica Powell and I am with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and I am the project manager for the study um, for the project delivery team. We also have several members from uh, the Port of Oakland <clears throat> uh, in the Maritime Division, we have the Maritime Director, Brian Brandes, um, Jason Garbin, and Justin Tasha. In Social Responsibility Division, we have Amy Tharp, Laura Riola, Luana Espana. Luana is actually um, our technical lead, and um, if you have any issues or if you know of anyone that's having issues, uh, please uh, let us know uh, through the chat box, and um, we will make sure that she um, can help them. And then in the environmental programs and planning, uh, we have Colleen Liang and Kamli Shua. On the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers side, um, we have several members here that are helping, uh, both from the planning and the environmental team. 
Uh, we have Dr. Tessa Beach, who is our planning chief. And we have Jessica McCaffrey, Eric Jolliffe, Ellie Covington, Jamie Yin, and Erin Maloney. So we really appreciate um, having all the team members here. Before we begin, um, I'd like to go over the meeting format. Today, we are using a Zoom webinar and we have closed captioning available. So to enable this feature, click live transcript, then select show subtitle. If you would like to view the full transcript of the meeting in the side panel, click view full transcript. Please note that this meeting is being recorded. <clears throat> so the meeting will begin with a presentation um, and then it will be followed by a public comment session. We'll be using the chat and raise hand features during the public comment session and we'll go over how to use those when we get to that point. So no need to worry about that now. Um, we will give you instructions uh, more than once to make sure that you're able to use it. All right, next slide, please. So here's our agenda. The main, the main purpose for tonight's meeting is to provide um, revisions on the report um, to um, provide highlights as well as um, show you where the, the report, the, the, the responses to comments from the first draft are, and then we'll have a Q and A session as well as how to submit comments in writing because it's very important that you submit your comments in writing. So before we move forward with that though, um, <clears throat> I'd like to introduce um, Maritime Director Brian Brandes, and then um, we'll be introducing Dr. Tessa Beach for some opening remarks. Brian, would you mind? Yes, thank you so much, Erica. Um, again, Brian Brandis, the Director of Maritime for uh, the Port of Oakland. And good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you uh, so very much uh, for joining us. I've served as the Director of Maritime uh, for three years. Uh, prior to uh, joining the port, I served as an executive with one of the world's uh, largest <laughs> ocean carriers. Uh, and I'm very encouraged with the, the attendance tonight and very appreciative of everyone's continued collaboration on this very important study. Since joining the port, I've had the pleasure to be part of a team that has and continues to work through challenges to deliver a cleaner and more efficient future. Not only did the pandemic rebrand supply chain as a household term, it has also taught us here at the port that we need to be ready for the future before the future arrives. This is exactly what we are working on uh, and towards today. Thank you again for spending your valuable time with us here tonight and for being part of the ports tomorrow. Thank you and I'll turn it back over to you to Erica. Thank you, Brian. And now I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Tessa Beach. Um, she is our planning chief. Um, Tessa, if you have, you're ready. Thanks, Erica, and welcome everybody. I'm Dr. Tessa Beach. I am the chief of planning and the environmental branch chief for the US Army Corps of Engineers San Francisco district. Uh, as Erica stated on behalf of the district, I really wanna extend our gratitude to you all for your time this evening and your continued engagement on this important study. Our district in partnership with the Port of Oakland as a non-federal sponsor has been studying potential improvements to address vessel transit inefficiencies at the port. And as you should all be aware on April 26th, we re-released a second draft of our integrated feasibility report and environmental assessment. Your input and comments on this study are really important to us and we look forward to hearing from you this evening. In that vein, I do want to recognize that this afternoon we received the same letter from numerous individuals requesting three primary things. The addition of 60 days to the comment period, an added public meeting during the comment period, <clears throat> and the preparation of an environmental impact statement or EIS. 
With the recent receipt of these requests, we are evaluating them and will respond accordingly. However, I would like to acknowledge that with consideration of the impact avoidance and reduction measures proposed under the various alternatives and their anticipated environmental benefits, we have not identified the need to prepare an EIS. Thank you again for your time this evening. And now I'll turn it back over to Erica to proceed with the presentation. Thank you so much, um, Tessa. So now I'd like to hand it over to um, our lead planner. Her name is Jessica McCaffrey. And Jessica's gonna go through the slide deck to provide um, uh, some information and clarification. Well, I'd like to suggest that um, at the end of the presentation, we will have a short period um, where folks can ask for clarification just on the PowerPoint presentation. And then after that, we will move into a question and answer session. Okay, so Jessica, will you take over? Great, thanks. All right, I'm gonna move to the next slide. Um, so, as we mentioned, this is a listening session um, of a really, this is for the re-release of our draft report that we initially released back in 2021. Um, we are committed to public engagement. We've held a number of public engagement meetings um, since the initiation of the study. Uh, this included working team meetings with interagency groups, um, groups that are focused on um, on neighborhood specific interests like the Oakland Acorn and Prescott Neighborhood Councils um, and other stakeholder engagement meetings. Um, in that spirit, we are interested in public comment. Um, on the next slide, we have information about how to have your comment included in the public record. We can move to the next slide. Um, our comment period currently does close 12 June. Uh, you can use the QR codes shown uh, to find where you can um, make your public make your comment uh, to have it included in the official record. We are asking that you go ahead and submit them in writing, and you can do so at the links provided using the QR code. Um, the email here: Oakland Harbor Turning Basin Study at USACE.org. Uh, excuse me, usace.army.mil, or you can mail it directly to Eric Jolliffe at the address provided. Um, again, all of this is provided on the website. This presentation will be uploaded to the website after this meeting. So um, that's all available. Um, at the end of the meeting, we do have some information about how to access a hard copy if you don't have access to the website. Um, next slide, please. As we mentioned, this is a re-release of our draft integrated feasibility report and environmental assessment that we released initially back in 2021. Um, after the initial release of the draft report, we did refine the plan identified in the report. Um, this shifted the footprints for the inner and outer harbor turning basin, um, and that led to us identifying some required in water work and pile driving that wasn't discussed in the initial draft report. As such, we determined we needed to re-release. Um, and this allows the public an opportunity to comment on the changes. Uh, we did make a number of edits to the draft report. These are summarized within the report in the executive summary on page six. Uh, the most notable changes are an added greenhouse gas analysis, a draft risk assessment, a separate cumulative impact section, and a discussion of the potential for induced growth. Um, additionally, we have a summary of economic and navigation changes affecting the summary, new groundwater conditions at Howard Terminal, um, and a number of other items that were just kind of updates and needed to reflect this shift. Um, and again, these are summarized within the report on page six. Uh, we can go to the next slide. 
The study area in the report, or in the study rather, is unchanged from the initial report. Um, our study looked at navigational challenges in Oakland Harbor. Uh, Oakland Harbor is a federal channel maintained by the Corps of Engineers. Um, this Oakland Seaport is shown here in red. The north is Interstate 80, uh, which is also the San Francisco Oakland Bay Bridge. To the east is Interstate 880. Um, to the east of the interstate is the communities of West Oakland. Uh, and to the south, the Inner Harbor Channel serves as boundary between the neighboring Alameda community and the port. A large portion of the containers serviced at the port are actually exports. Uh, the port is mostly a second or last port of call. Uh, what this means is that vessels visiting Oakland are coming after they've other, visited other um, ports on the West Coast. And then these vessels depart for foreign markets. As such, um, the port is largely serving an exports market. Um, so only a small percentage of containers on any given vessel are actually handled at the port. Uh, for example, back in 2022, fewer than 2,000 containers on average were handled from a vessel visiting uh, as depicted on the following slide. Um, next slide. So our existing turning basins were constructed in the early 2000s. They were designed based on the dimensions of ships that were much more common at the time, which so they were designed to accommodate a vessel approximately 1,100 feet in length. Over the past two decades, we have seen an increasing number of larger vessels with much larger capacity. Um, and they're becoming a larger portion of the overall worldwide fleet of ships. Um, so with that in mind, like we have a growing number of vessels that are approximately 1,300 feet in length. Um, these larger ships are facing um, some inefficiencies when they enter into. So like while they're more efficient for transporting goods, like they have larger capacity, fewer ships are required to ship the same number of containers. When they get to port, they face um, additional restrictions. So, um, We'll discuss that on the next slide. Um, with fewer vessels moving, um, an increased number of containers annually, um, the ships do spend a little bit more time at berth, um, but once they've docked, they have like plugged into power, so they're not having the like diesel emissions that a ship would have once they're docked. Um, this additional time is required because there are a fixed number of cranes to move any given number of containers. Um, but overall, as you can see, kind of like in the far right hand column, our overall number of vessel visits are actually reduced from when we initially constructed the project back in the early 2000s. The next slide. So um, in order to safely navigate the channel, um, these longer vessels, the larger vessels, do have restricted operations. This limits when the vessels can enter and exit uh, the harbor and how they dock. Additionally, they also require additional pilots to guide the ship. Um, this results in delays and idling, um, not just for the larger vessel vessels, but also smaller vessels that are impacted by like essentially having to wait um, while these other vessels navigate the channel. Next slide. So like we mentioned before, the re-release was required after we shifted the proposed footprints for the turning basin. The shift can be seen here uh, with the proposed footprint for the outer harbor in blue and the previous proposed footprint in green. Uh, for the inner harbor, the proposed footprint is highlighted in red and the previous footprint is shown in purple. So they're relatively very similar. Uh, there's just, for the case of the inner harbor, 
However, we did identify some additional in-water work. Uh, next slide. So our draft recommended plan calls for widening of both the inner and outer harbor to accommodate larger vessels. The plan incorporates the use of electric dredges and will place approximately 2 million cubic yards of sediment at beneficial use sites. Uh, the material that is placed with beneficial use will contribute to an estimated 279 acres of wetlands. Um, if you need an idea of what size that is, it's approximately the size of a little bit more than 200 football fields or approximately one seventh of the area of the Port of Oakland. Uh, we do expect construction to last about three years, starting 2027 and running through 2029. Next slide, please. So the recommended plan has incorporated a number of best management practices to reduce the overall impacts of the project on the surrounding communities. Um, Specifically, we've heard concerns about noise, air quality, and dust. Um, so these best management practices specifically address that. Um, we've included the use of electric dredges to avoid construction-related emissions that would impact the air quality of the West Oakland community. Um, the use of electric dredges is considered a betterment, and the additional cost associated with the dredging um, for electric dredges will be paid by the Port of Oakland. We've also incorporated best practices to minimize dust and noise. Our plan for beneficial reuse of dredged material will contribute to wetland restoration with associated benefits. Um, specifically, there's some sea level rise resiliency that's provided by wetlands as well as carbon capture. Um, additionally, we have identified transport routes to try to minimize the overall impact to surrounding communities. Next slide, please. As far as project schedule, we are currently in the study phase of the project. After receipt of comments and responding to public comments, we expect to finalize the report in early 2024. We anticipate congressional approval of the project in a 2024 Water Resources Development Act. Um, assuming this 2024 approval, we anticipate our design and pre-construction work to take a couple of years, followed by anticipated construction start in 2027, continuing through 2029. Uh, again, this is all contingent on congressional approval. Next slide. As we mentioned, um, our draft study is available online and the link is included up top. However, if uh, for whatever reason you can't access online or you would prefer to review a hard copy, uh, we have hard copies available um, through um, local libraries that are listed here. There's also a copy available at the port's headquarter office um, with addresses here. Uh, that is our basic overview of where we are with the re-release of this draft report. Um, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and turn this back over to Erica for comment or questions. Thank you, Jessica. I really appreciate that. Um, I was just wanted to um, suggest that if if you have questions or you have clear, you need clarification on the PowerPoint deck, <clears throat> please submit that into the chat box, and we will clarify any of the slides that you saw. <clears throat> and if that's not, um, if I, we don't get any comments on the PowerPoint, then we'll go ahead and move forward to the comment. Um, session. Laura or Ellie, do we have any comments regarding the presentation? Thank you for that. Um, hi there. Let's see. Uh, right now, 
in the chat box, we currently have, um, we don't have anybody yet who has a question, although we did um, have a, our guest, um, with Susan Ransom, asking if there is a comment period or just Q&A. Yes, there is um, a comment session um, coming up. So we can go ahead and move forward with that. Or questions, I should say, questions about the presentation. We, <clears throat> if there are none, then we will move towards um, questions about the study or comments that you'd like to um, make. And the way we will do that, as indicated earlier, um, if you put your name in the chat box and you say you would like to ask a question, then um, Laura will monitor uh, the order in which those comments are received or in which the hands are raised. And we'll do one group first and then we'll do the other. Okay. Great. And I'm um, counting on Laura to keep us, keep us. Okay, in. definitely. So thank you again. Um, so what we'll do is take the um, queue of hands first, followed by uh, the questions in the chat. We'll take them in the order as we see them. Right now I have one person with the raised hand, that is Ms. Fern. Ms. Fern, uh, I've asked uh, if you can kindly unmute yourself and ask the question. Yeah, thank you for the presentation. Um, I'm Fern with the Environmental Defense Fund. A question about um, one of the changes in the re-release report. Does the um, new greenhouse gases analysis, does that include the assumption of expanded operations based on the widened basins or even like increased TU, or is it only to do with the construction phase? Thank you. Sorry, Erica, you are on mute. Sorry, thank you for your question. One thing I, I wanted to thank you, uh, Ms. Fern. I did want to emphasize um, the most important thing that we can ask uh, of you today is to submit your comments in writing as well to the information that was provided so that it becomes an official comment. Although it's being recorded today, we really emphasize that you submit your comment in writing. Um, it's really, really important so that it becomes part of the record, the official record. Um, okay. Just to just to loop back to Fern, she right now she has asked a question, not a comment. And yes. So um, we can answer that. Either Eric or Tessa, if you could raise your hand, please. Uh, this is this is Eric Jolliffe. Uh, we uh, the greenhouse gas emissions does include both operations and and construction, uh, to, as I understand, um, but it doesn't um, assume expanded TEU. Um, the the uh, projection is that this the the expansion of these turning basins on their own isn't going to and isn't going to increase throughput through the port. Um, Somebody else may want to clarify that in, in more detail than than I than I I can. Okay, Th thank you. I I can submit um, further questions, I guess. Um, but I my understanding based on the previous um, report was that it um, it would lead to increased TEUs. I may be mistaken. Yeah, that that is uh, that is not an assumption that that we have made. It's uh, we we assume that uh, port growth is independent of these uh, uh, turning basins. Um, I'm wondering if Justin from the port can respond. Um, we did do an analysis within the report discussing the potential for inducing growth. 
Um, we did conclude that we wouldn't be, but I, I think Justin could speak a little bit more directly to that. Hi, all. Let me mute myself, get my video on. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us here today. Justin Tashik, uh, project manager in Maritime with the Port of Oakland. Um, we are the non federal sponsor uh, for the study with the US Army Corps of Engineers, if that wasn't clear. So it is a partnership between the Corps and the Port of Oakland. Um, I would share specifically. Uh, the technical experts that uh, did the analyses, specifically greenhouse gas in particular, are not with us today. Um, I would uh, just respect all here to um, take down the questions so that we can speak with the experts that did do those analyses so we can uh, correctly inform the group here uh, what was included, what was not because uh, the greenhouse gas analysis was a new addition uh, with this revised draft. Thank you. And Fern, one other thing. Um, we have, uh, if you look in the, the revised report in the appendices, uh, we have developed some responses to previous comments. And that was a, a very common comment, actually, that a lot of people made. Um, and we have developed a, a master response to that. At the, I think it's one of the first comments responded to in the appendices. Thank you for that. Thank you, Eric. Thank you all. This is Laura here going back to the queue. Uh, I don't see an, any more raise of hands, but I do see in our chat a question from, I believe it's J Mr. James Van. And in it, I'll read it and someone can answer. The length of the newer vessels appear to exceed the space available for the turning. Is there a problem? Question from Mr. James Van. So um, let's see, who do we point to here who can answer the question? I would ask for uh, clarification um, okay. from uh, Mr. James. Okay, Mr. Van, I will ask you to unmute you, unmute yourself in just a second, as soon as I find you here. Here we go. Mr. Van, if you'd like to um, maybe clarify your question a little bit. And it's okay to clarify in the chat box as well. Not sure if he um, can hear us. Right. Let's see. Okay. So we'll just go ahead and, and table that comment for now, uh, so we can, until we get clarification. <clears throat> okay, we can go back to his question. Yes. Um, I'll test to see if his microphones are working. And the next person that we have? Yeah. Um, then we have... Um, we realize people are, are, are um, ready to get in the queue for the comments, the, the comment portion of this. So thank you for, for waiting um, and bearing with us for the Q&A. So just a reminder, right now we are taking questions for any of the materials presented to you thus far. And if you do have a question, please raise your hand. I think they're I think they're ready to move on. Okay, one more. Sorry about that. I do have um, a follow up question uh, from Marie Logan. Marie Logan, if you can kindly unmute yourself. Let's see.
Okay. Hi there, can you hear me now? Yes, Ms. Logan, yes. we can hear you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I wanted to follow up on Fern's question about um, the assumption about the assumptions about operations. Um, I heard Mr. Jolliffe mention that there is not an assumption about expanded TEU here. And I heard him say that the projection is that the expansion of the basins will not increase cargo throughput. And then I also heard him say that port growth is independent. Um, and I was confused by that because I do see projections in the EA that the port will continue to grow and that it will see an increase in, in TEUs. And so I was trying to figure out how those can be reconciled. And if you could talk a little bit more about that. Thank you. Erica, I don't know if you want to take this one, but um, I would point again to the port or maybe Eric to talk a little bit about um, the potential for induced growth. Yeah. So well, our project is specifically responding to an existing issue. Um, these ships are already using the turning basins. They are having operational inefficiencies specifically because they exceed the turning basins. So they're already visiting the port. Um, so expanding the turning basins allows them to operate more efficiently. It doesn't increase the number of vessels or the number of containers loading or offloading at the port. And, and just in a nutshell, uh, Marie, uh, what uh, the turning bay, the throughput and TEUs coming through the port are going to be determined by by demand in the market. Um, and this is just a more efficient way of, of dealing with what comes through. It's not going to increase the throughput in itself. Thank you. That's just a biologist speaking. I'm not, I'm not an economist, so I can't get into too many details for you. And um, I was going to ask uh, Laura or Luana if um, Andrew Basil is, I thought he joined, if, if he's available, he'd also be a good person to respond to that. He's our lead economist. We will look to see for um, Andrew Basil, you said? Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't believe Andrew was able to join. Okay. All right. So thank you, Ms. Logan, for your for your uh, your uh, question regarding uh, clarification of that information. So, and I think we have a, a better, um, pretty well defined response in the report. So hopefully, we're able to uh, to see that. Do we have any more uh, clarifications on the PowerPoint presentation, or can we move to the We don't have any more, just to confirm, um, and if I could, I believe Ms. Susan Ransom is, is waiting for the comment portion. Uh, okay. In which case, thank you, Susan, for waiting. Oh, she has her hand up, so nope, let me. Hi, Susan, could you unmute yourself? I did, so are thank we in you. comment session? <laughs> and I'm number one, so don't start. You are, oh. Susan. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, so thank you so much. This is Susan Ransom with SSA Terminal. First, I'd like to say how much we as an industry appreciate the Army Corps and the Port of Oakland for their commitment to the Turning Basin Project. This project is essential for the economic growth of the port. And I know we've talked a lot about growth, but the Turning Basin Project in itself is for more efficiency, but you know, years to come, obviously we want the port to grow some. I mean, that's what we do. But for the better ship efficiency moving in and out of the harbors, for all the environmentalists on this call, widening the turning basin will not only help expedite the current ships faster, but will encourage the bigger, more fuel efficient ships to come to Oakland. This will in turn lessen the amount of ship traffic with smaller ships being redeployed or taken out of commission. 
The trucks hauling the goods, which is also a concern, are also compliant environmentally and soon moving towards a future of electric trucks. We continue to work with the port closely to meet the needs of the environmental industry. This turning basin project is a win for the environment and a win for the port. My last comment, second for the port people on here, with regards to maritime reservation land under the A's current term agreement, which is set to expire on the 13th, we will respectfully ask that any further negotiations on alternate ideas or further talks with the A's regarding Howard Terminal exclude the maritime reservation land that is meant for the turning basin. At this time, there is zero reason this reserve land should be part of any negotiations. If the 10 acres is not entirely needed at the end of the project, then the port at that time can decide what to do with the remaining land. We know you support, we know your support of the turning basin is strong and your support of this request is truly appreciated. Thank you so much. Thank you for your comment. Um, so again, uh, for, since we've entered the, the, the question and answer session, the comment session, we have um, a two minute, uh, you saw that now on the screen, it popped up. We have a two minute limit um, for your comment. Wanna make sure that everyone has an opportunity to speak. And so that's why we're, tr we're trying to limit uh, the amount of time. Okay. So um, can you give me the next two names, Ms. Laura? Yeah, hi, Erica, that we have um, the next names is Mike Jacob and S.W. Lee. I'm gonna ask Mike Jacob to unmute himself. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we, we can, perfectly. Okay, great, thank you. Um, Mike Jacob, I'm with Pacific Merchant Shipping Association and we represent ocean carriers and marine terminal operators on the US West Coast, including the Port of Oakland. And um, thank you to the Port and the US Army Corps for uh, recirculating and opening this back up for a public comment and discussion. Um, as the, the Port staff and, and Army Corps staff mentioned, this is really an important project for a number of reasons. Um, it helps facilitate safety on the water um, and expands the capacity of the port to handle vessels at all hours of the day, not just at night. I'm sorry, not just at day, but also at night. Um, would allow us to turn vessels with fewer tug assists, which also makes us more efficient, lowers costs, and reduces emissions. Um, and then also reduces costs and emissions per unit. Um, so you know, obviously hearing earlier about concerns about induced growth, growth is a, a complicated factor, but with respect to an inducement, if you're a farmer and you're shipping something uh, from the Central Valley to Asia, you don't say, I'm going to do that because there's an expanded turning basin. And that's why there's no inducement. That market uh, exists and it uh, will operate regardless of what's happening with the turning basin. The economic efficiencies for the turning basin occur within and, and totally internal to the ocean carrier. You'll deploy a larger ship, which means you've lowered costs per unit you've lowered emissions per unit um, and you've created more efficiency within the system. We wanna facilitate the growth that we've already um, essentially planned for when we've built our terminals out, we've gone through the CEQA process um, and that's facilitated in a way which is obviously more environmentally, uh, but also efficiently and economically beneficial. So we appreciate you guys going through this process. And then one more thing on greenhouse gases and we'll be submitting this with our comments. Uh, but when you divert cargo, or when you have cargo going on, on smaller vessels, GHGs per unit, um, and also total GHGs, both increase. Um, and that's not in our best interest or in the best interest of the environment. So thank you again, appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Ms. Laura. Yes, we have uh, Mr. S.W. Lee in the queue. Can you kindly unmute yourself? Hi, um, can you hear me okay? Yes. Great. Um, so uh, I'm the president of uh, SW Logistics, uh, a company here in Oakland that um, does freight forwarding and customs clearance. I'm also the um, representing here today. 
uh, Custom Brokers and Forwarders Association of Northern California. We wholeheartedly agree with uh, Susan Ransom and Mike Taylor regarding uh, the churning basin. It is uh, absolutely necessary. Um, all the ships that is being built now for the new fuel requirements for cleaner fuel that is going into uh, production is 10,000 TUs and higher. And those will um, definitely require a larger turning basin here in Oakland. Oh my we, God, uh, we are um, also um, mindful of uh, what's going on with uh, the Oakland A's uh, at Howard Terminal. We would like to also follow up and request that the the Howard Terminal be put back into um, the control of Port of Oakland and uh, for maritime use in, in, in the future. Thank you. Great, thank you for your, your comment. Uh, Erica, next in the queue is er, uh, Marie Logan and then Mr. Mel McKay. So Marie Logan, next. Ms. Logan. Thank you very much. And thank you to Dr. Beach and the members of the Port of Oakland staff for making time to hear the community concerns about this project. Uh, my name is Marie Logan and I'm an attorney with Earth Justice. Uh, there are four points I wanted to offer tonight. The first is about public engagement. Uh, we're disappointed that the Army Corps outreach to the community has not been really adequate for this event. Um, to my knowledge and understanding, the Corps did not consult with the West Oakland community at all in the past year between the release of the last environmental assessment and the present revised environmental assessment. Um, relatedly, this event has been hosted on Eventbrite, which in my experience anyways, required creation of an account and that in itself dissuades public participation and makes it harder for members of the public to communicate their concerns. And so we have concerns that the Corps has not been adhering to the Biden administration's recently issued executive orders on environmental justice, like order 14096, that requires consultation with fence line communities about projects that impact their, their community. Um, so we wanted to reiterate our request for a 60 day extension of the comment period so that the community um, and you know, interested members of the public can provide adequate review of the uh, many numerous documents that have been released already. My second point is about the scope of the project. It seems to be functionally unchanged from last year. Um, we raised these concerns last year that the impact of an expansion on the basins will be felt throughout the landside community in the form of increased truck traffic, increased air pollution, um, and the scope of the analysis in the report is drawn too narrowly to capture those impacts. Uh, the third point I'll make is that, again, this is an environmental justice issue. West Oakland is already disproportionately impacted by port activity, and residents deserve to be more closely considered in any plan that may exacerbate health harms related to air quality. And the final point I'll make is that this expansion project poses ecological risks, too. Um, there are risks to marine and coastal ecosystems, local wildlife. I have more to say, but I see I'm out of time. So I just wanted to conclude by noting that we are requesting that the Army Corps pursue a full environmental impact statement so that it can more thoroughly identify and analyze all of these concerns. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Logan, for your comment. Next, we have in the queue Mel McKay and then uh, Cameron Carr. We'll go with Mel McKay first. Um, could you kind of unmute yourself, Mr. Mel? Uh, thank you. I appreciate this. Uh, this turning basin is essential to the largest ships. In 2000, when uh, the basin was uh, assembled, it was for 5,000 to 8,000 TNUs uh, per vessel. There was a smaller vessels. I'm a longshoreman. I've been on the water for over 30 years. Uh, past president of the BioW Local 10. This is essential for the larger vessels. This is how we feed our families. If these larger vessels go to Southern California, San Pedro, or Long Beach, or even the Pacific Northwest, uh, Local 10, Oakland, California, will miss a lot of work. And this is what happened to the pandemic. They had to divert their vessels, right? Because of all the hoopla with the turning basin in the Oakland A's, the vessels decided to go elsewhere. And this turning basin is essential to our jobs. 
If these larger vessels have to go to Southern California or the North, we'll lose immensely. So I think it's very, very essential to this turning basin for the Army Corps of Engineers to do their study and continue with their work. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McKay, for your comment. Ms. Laura, do, who do we have next? Yeah, we have Cameron Carr. Can you kindly unmute yourself, Cameron? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, good evening, and thank you for the opportunity to comment. I'm Cameron Carr, and I'm here on behalf of the Bay Planning Coalition. Our organization has a diverse membership of over 100 members who together support our mission of promoting the sustainability of the region's environment and economy. As we can see from the presentation tonight, the Turning Basin Project would further increase efficiency and enhance capabilities at the port, which is a key component to our region's success. Uh, moreover, with improved navigational access for larger vessels, which already berth at the port, the widening of the harbor will allow for smoother operations to accommodate consumer demands. Ensuring our region continues to support the nation's economy and serve as a gateway to global markets. By optimizing operations, the project will support a greener future for our communities by reducing terminal congestion and minimizing emissions from stagnant vessels. Um, in closing, I would like to thank you again for the opportunity to comment, and we look forward to supporting the progress of the Oakland Harbor Turning Basin. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carr. Next, we have William Dow. Could you kindly unmute yourself? Thank you. Mr. William, um, we can't hear you. Um, are we, he looks like he's muted. Are you able to unmute him? Yeah, we've, um, he's, he, he has himself muted. Uh, Mr. Dow, if you are on your phone, it looks like you are dialed in through the network. Um, but if you're on your phone, you can unmute yourself. Uh, hello? Here we go. Did that work? Did that yeah, work? Yeah. Okay, you yeah. got to forgive me. I'm an old timer and I don't know how to work this thing. Uh, the, uh, I'm uh, William Dow, Local 6 ILW, retired and uh, am supporting the uh, issue of the turn basin. The maritime industry is too important to this area to let it go by and uh, let the shipping move to another port and to remove the Howard Terminal from uh, put back on port designation. The A's aren't doing anything with it and uh, they're just playing games and stop fooling around. Thank you very much. Wow. Thank you, Mr. Dow. Laura, I don't see any other names after Mr. Dow. That's right. I don't have any more. Um, and I do, there aren't any more hands in the queue. Um, and there aren't any raised hands. There aren't any raised hands in the queue. Um, so now's it time for in case anybody wants to provide an oral comment here and while we do that it doesn't look like there are there are any further comments in the chat box we again we went through some of the questions um, and have heard from marie logan um from there is a hand raised now Oh, okay. And that is S.W. Lee. Okay. So I know Mr. Mr. S.W. Lee has uh, commented in the past um, or has already provided comment. If there's anybody we'd like to allow in the interest of time and people's participation, if anybody else has a comment before we go um, back to folks who have already provided comment. I think there's another person uh, Ron Cancia. That's right. Um, looks like Ron 
might be having technical issues. But if you can, Ron, join us. I've asked for you to unmute yourself um, or perhaps type something in the chat box for us to. Yeah. We're happy to read your comment if you're able to chat, type it into the chat box. Mr. Cancia um, just wrote in the chat box, I support the whining, the whitening 100%. Close quote. Thank you very much, Mr. Ron. We appreciate your comment. Okay. Um, we have, again, Mr. Dow who has, I don't see anybody else. Excuse me, here comes a train. I don't see anyone else either. Um, okay. Mr. Lee, can you kindly unmute yourself? You raised your hand for to provide a comment. Yes, um, I, I'm not uh, sure if I am allowed to uh, make a comment regarding the lady uh, uh, who had the environmental concerns, but and I am not an expert in this in any sense of the word. But uh, these new vessels that we're trying to accommodate with this wider uh, churn basin is. Uh, are absolutely more fuel efficient and cleaner than what is uh, coming in now. Um, having said that, as far as uh, additional traffic is concerned, additional traffic uh, under California law that is coming to affect uh, truck trucking uh, trucks into the port, they will be all uh, transitioning to electric uh, or hydrogen or other alternative fuels uh, coming into the Ford port by the time this gets built. So I believe that um, those uh, two, uh, the, the cleaner ships and the cleaner trucks into the port, uh, by the time this gets built, will absolutely uh, be in line with California's clean air guidelines. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lee. We have next in the queue, Fern. Ms. Fern, I'm gonna ask you to unmute yourself. Hi, yes, thank you. Um, just quickly in response to um, the previous comment, um, I, rec I acknowledge the, with the advanced clean truck fleets coming into effect that trucks will be cleaner, but it's not just about trucks, it's the vibrations and the noise that will continue to come through um, port adjacent neighborhoods. So that is something to be considered um, even when there's um, the tailpipe emissions are reduced. Um, and I just wonder if my comment relates to kind of even with the growth, the assumption of no induced growth, um, there is kind of um, over capacity at ports across um, the US. And I wonder to what extent that has been considered. Um, EDF works with a number of ports, um, not just, just in California, but and everyone is in competition, is looking to widen um, the basins to accommodate these larger ships. And I just wonder to what extent um, those economics um, beyond California or beyond the port um, Oakland has been considered um, in these studies. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fern, for your comment. We appreciate it. I don't see any other hands or comments in the chat box, but we plan to be here to the conclusion of the of the meeting, um, we will be here <clears throat> till eight p.m.
it looks like we're competing with a certain game, <laughs> which is probably why <laughs> we don't have more comments. But um, yeah. So we'll stay on. I'll go off. Off. Uh, I will go on mute and turn off my camera for now. For those of you that are still uh, here, we do want to remind you, and I, I believe Ms. Maloney wrote that in the chat box, is that <clears throat> uh, comments, you know, are, we strongly consider that you, I um, encourage you to submit your comment in writing, either via email or by mail uh, to the Oakland Harbor Turning Basins study at usace.army.mil. Um, and, that, so on the screen, you can see the email address. Um, there are several of us monitoring that. So we'll make sure that uh, your comments are, are recorded. The documents are also at the US Army Corps of Engineers website. There's another slide that has that. Um, and there's a link to it as well on the Port of Oakland's website. The other thing I wanted to emphasize is the fact that this is a re-release and um, just kind of remind folks that are still here that um, Jessica in her presentation um, highlighted the fact that we have on page six of the executive summary, you can find um, all the areas of the sections that changed in the revised or the re-release of the draft document. The other thing I'd like to share with you is that the PowerPoint presentation will be available on the uh, Corps of Engineers website and a link will be provided on the port's website as well as this is a partnership between the two agencies. <clears throat> And then lastly, for anyone who prefers to look at documents in hard copy format, um, Jessica also had in the PowerPoint presentation and you can see it on uh, the two websites, the core and the ports website, um, the locations where you can uh, visit a library near you and look at a hard copy document. So that's all I have for now. Again, we appreciate your time, your comments, your thoughtfulness. Um, super helpful. All right. So at this time, um, thank you, Mr. Cleveland. Um, at this time, we're going to just, um, I'm gonna go off on, on mute and I'm gonna turn off my camera. And we'll just, we'll be around. We don't wanna go away. Well, I will, um, in the meantime, we'll fill up the, the blank space with some music until I can see uh, any raised hands and alert the team here or that we have a public comment um, in the queue, okay? Thank you, Laura, appreciate that. Yeah.
for anyone that just joined us. The line is still open if you'd like to make a comment to be recorded. We're keeping the line open till 8 p.m. Thank you. If you'd like to make a comment, uh, you can raise your hand or um, you can submit a comment in the chat box. Thank you very much. We have one person in the queue with, um, with who has raised their hand. Um, I don't see it anymore. Apologies. Um, it's here. Oh, thank you, Ms. Laura. Let's see. Um, I don't see that person anymore, or I don't see the hand. Um, not sure who it was in the on um, who has logged in. If you were trying to make a public comment, could you let us know by raising your hand, and we will turn your mic on. I don't see it.
If anyone join us in the last few minutes and would like to make a comment, raise your hand or put your <clears throat> comment in the chat box. Um, let us know how we can help you make your comment. Thank you. I see Miss Margaret. Miss Margaret Gordon has joined us. Miss Margaret, would you like to make a comment? Uh, the line is still open. We can unmute your your microphone. Hello. Hi, Miss Margaret. Yes, I can't get into the overall meeting. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, <clears throat> the meeting was recorded, so we do have it. And if the the comment period is still open, if you wanted to make a comment, I thought the meeting was from six to eight o'clock. Yes, the meeting was started at 6 p.m. And at 7 p.m., we didn't have any more comments, any more um, attendees trying to make a comment. Um, so our team, both the, the core and the port, are keeping the line open from 7 to 8 p.m. If anyone wants to make a comment or has a question, you know, we're still, right. um, the line's still open. All right, thank you. So we'll leave your, if you want us to make a comment, your, your uh, microphone is open. We're I'll, ready to listen. I'll, I'll, I'll write something in. Okay. Okay. We appreciate that. Thank you, Miss Margaret. Yes.
Miss Margaret, I see that you put a comment in the chat box. Would you like me to read it out for, for you? Or would you like to read it yourself? No, I don't need for you to read it out to me. Okay. And then the second thing that I wanted to highlight is that the PowerPoint is going to be available. There was a little short PowerPoint um, where we presented um, some of the highlights of what has changed from the previous uh, draft to the re-release. Oh, is that right? Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. Yeah. And then the webinar is also recorded, so you'll be able to watch it, um, even though you you might have missed part of it. So it it, it is of it will be available for thank you for you to view. Thank you. Now investigators are looking again decades later.
Well, we have about, um, for everyone, anyone that's still around, uh, we have about five minutes left uh, to submit comments. Of course, we strongly encourage you to submit written comments um, via the, uh, through email to Mr. Eric Jolliffe at Oakland Harbor Turning Basin Study at usace.army.mil. or in writing uh, via regular email to Mr. Eric Jolliffe at the address shown on the screen, which is 450 Golden Gate Avenue, fourth floor, San Francisco, California, 94102. And if you have any problems or any issues trying to submit your comments, please reach out. Um, at that email address, Oakland Harbor Turning Basin Study at usace.army.mil, and let us know if you need any assistance in making sure that your comments are submitted for the record. So we have a few minutes left. We have about three minutes left. I see that there are still a few comments being submitted on the chat box. We appreciate that. I'm going to go ahead and take these last uh, couple of minutes to um, thank the team for uh, being on here uh, till the end of the call. I really appreciate you um, taking the time to stay on through the completion of this public meeting. Really appreciate your time. And if there are no more comments, we're going to be closing out in about two minutes. I want to remind you that, um, and I don't know if Justin, if you can go back to the slide that has the email address plus the two, um, the port and the CORE's website, if you don't mind. Yep, that one. So just a reminder that the comment uh, period closes on 12 June, 2023. Um, there are two QR codes there, one for the port, one for the core. Um, you can find all the documents on the Corps of Engineers website as listed there. And again, uh, please feel free to reach out um, if you have any questions. on how to submit comments, whatever we can do to help. How we work. Ms. Margaret, did you have something else to add before we close out? Okay. Well, 
Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this evening, uh, for taking the time to submit comments, to raise your hand and ask questions. Um, we still have the slide up on, on the screen to show you how you can submit comments on how to reach out if you have questions and need assistance submitting comments. Um, we're happy to help. So thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Uh, don't forget the presentation will be available on the website as well as the recording. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you so much.